Making a knife from a lawnmower blade. Part 3, Redesign. William Hobie Smith, 2021. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And it pays to field test your products. And we went to Osaba Island with this knife, and we found it did not perform satisfactorily. So consequently, we're going to remake it. The knife that I made from a lawnmower blade, and have two previous videos about it, did not do all that well at Ossibal. Uh, two things were majorly wrong with it. Uh, the first was that the blade was not well hardened. It dulled very quickly when I was cutting. And the other factor is the blade is just too thick in this direction. The weight of this knife was not quite heavy enough to be an effective cleaver, nor thin enough in this direction to be a real good slicer. So consequently, what I'm going to do is to cut out a portion of this blade where you see the tape. I'm going to remove that much steel, which is going to lighten the blade, and also remove this part, which is slanted back toward the top, and actually it does no functional purpose here, uh, outside of adding strength. We're going to leave enough room here so it's not weakened so much by this star, and uh, also then remove the grips themselves, re-harden the entire blade, and re-grip. But just for ease of handling, I'm going to leave the grips on uh, while I grind it. I'm going to do much of the stock removal with the grinder. It is possible to make an entire knife like this using only the grinder, but it helps to you do use some other tools. But we'll do this with the grinder this time. Set my start point here. And as you can see, it's starting to go pretty fast. Our grinding has got about halfway down to where we want to go. But you can see the great differences between the thickness of the steel between here and here. And consequently, the problems I had in mounting the scales in that this portion of the blade uh, equally had a sharp slope to the top. The grip was not absolutely flat. And so we used a large amount of epoxy here to make that seal. And that is JP Weld. And we're going to have to break these scales off of here. And we're going to try to extract them, but uh, that's going to be difficult. Well, we've roughly reprofiled the knife now. And what we've done is actually made some significant improvements. Besides lightening the weight, we now have a much more robust top surface here. So if you needed to pound on this to break the pelvis on a large deer or a moose or whatever, then you have a better surface to work on than the very thin edge here. So that actually works and improves the functionality of the knife. And now we're going to put it on our knife making machine and take care of this rough this here and also do a little more smoothing and then tackle the real problems of trying to take off these scales without destroying them and I would give our chances of success at only about 20% at best. We're going to see if we can use that small rounded wheel at the top to actually make the bevel on the blade between the handle and the knife.
we have that curve, but we've also bit a little deeper. So we're going to go ahead and take out another section of the top. Now the line of the blade is much better. And this is nice and smoothly radius. And we have a parallel line here with more or less the blade. But this is as much as we'll do on the initial shaping until we actually harden the knife and do the final edging. And now we're going to see if we can drive out these pins without damaging the scales. And I have my doubts. This is a punch that more nearly fits the diameter. And now the pins are curved and polished, so difficult to get a purchase on. Attempt number one failed. So we're going to try attempt number two, which since the scales are sloping in this direction, I'm going to see if I can use this thin chisel and drive it through the epoxy. And have it pull the scales away. No, nope, nothing doing. All right. Since I'm not able to pop the scales off, it looks like I'm going to have to cut and grind them. As much as these as I can pop away with a chisel, the better. I hate to destroy my grips this way, but the more wood and stuff I can remove, the less grinding time I will have and the less difficulty I will have with it. Well, you can say that the JB Weld held. Well, it's certainly not coming off very smoothly, but at least it's coming off. Between the grinder and the belt sander, we have one half of the scales removed and the other half to go. But I've got to get it down to bare clean metal before heat treatment and hopefully get these pins out and I may have to drill them out. I have two of the pins worked out with the hydraulic press and we'll see if we can move this third one. I'm an author and depend on the sales of my books to support this channel. Most of my titles are outdoor books and ebooks, but I also have significant business titles and a new novel. My most recent business book is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age, where I advocate individual entrepreneurship and show you how you can actually formulate your own job concepts and act on them. On my novel, 
until death do you part, an American family meets their Sicilian cousins, a family from Louisiana takes a trip to Sicily, and they find some very unexpected events when they arrive on Monday and are informed that their sons are to be married on Friday or none will leave the island alive. There we went. Okay, pens extracted. Now that is at the expense of a bent tang. So I'll put this on the anvil and give it a couple of licks and see if we can straighten it out. This steel is still soft enough, I believe I can do that. While the blade is heating, I'm going to start on my scales. And I'm going to use this interesting block of persimmon wood. Persimmon wood is used for the heads of golf clubs because of its fracture resistance and its toughness. And that's why it's highly prized. It's also, as you can see, sometimes very colorful. Uh, this is the wood, and except for this knot hole right here, uh, yeah, that's a pretty solid piece of wood. So I have now dropped the support here down to more nearly the width of the plank I'm going to be sawing, which is something I should have done in the first place to keep it from waving around so much. Well, now I have two blocks that are much more nearly planar. And so these will be the inside that will actually fit against the steel. and quench and flame it, as it usually does. After quenching, the knife is particularly grody looking, being covered with black scale, uh, typical of carbon steel knives. And so we're going to take this scale off with a 120 belt here and also do a little bit of final shaping on it before we attach the grips do the final edging of the blade and the polishing. We now have had it on the scotch bright wheel and removed all the scale and now we can proceed to mount the grips. Well, how are we doing with our knife? The design is completed and this is about how I hope for it to look. I have the scales cut out and the pin's ready, but that blade is still not hard enough. Uh, it is feathering when I grind it, which indicates that the steel is still soft. Consequently, I'm going to have to raise the heat treatment from 1850 degrees to 30 minutes to something higher. But uh, that is, I think, for another day. Uh, you see here the effect of the redesign, and I like the redesign uh, considerably. Yep, yeah, I think that's an a interesting shape, and one that will be very effective once I get it properly hardened. But right now, on the cutting edge, I'm getting little small feathers, which again uh, is the indication that the steel is not sufficiently hardened. So, Another day, another time, uh, we're going to reharden it and finish the knife, but not today. 
So we'll end this video with a redesigned knife, but not complete. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This knife is flat on one side and edged on the other, with the lawnmower blade's original curve being used to push meat away from the blade when slicing. Lawnmower blade steel is designed to be flexible enough to bend when the blade hits a rock, rather than shattering. It will harden somewhat, but perhaps not as much as other carbon steels. This is what we will investigate in the next video. For more information on my books, blogs, and 900 videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. To support this channel, buy my outdoor books, business books, novel, and e-books. Coming up soon is a new e-book on refurbishing and building your own muzzleloaders. To check out my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To find out how my novel, screenplay, and movie project is coming along, go to fathertogrooms.net. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.